Today we're gonna talk about the difference between 3D modeling and sculpting. We will cover many points that I'm sure you will find interesting if you are a beginner. Before we do this, I wanted to let you know about a weapon creation course that was released recently. This training comes from a very qualified professional when it comes to weapons. It provides the knowledge on how to create a customizable revolver for first-person shooter video games. In the first chapter, you will take your time for modeling, and once you create the high poly section, you're gonna make use of Blender's remesh capabilities. After finishing the modeling phase, team will focus with you on the UV unwrapping of the models in order to have the perfect UV layout for baking and texture painting. For that, he will show you how to make use of excellent free add-ons to max out your texture space. The second chapter focuses on texturing in Substance Painter. Here the models are exported to Marmoset Toolbag. And the third and last chapter is about final renders in Marmoset Toolbag. Here is where you get to put your last touches to create a portfolio-ready render. In addition to turnable animations and arrange a scene in Blender, then take it back to Marmoset Toolbag for scene composition renders. If you are interested, you can find the necessary links in the description. We're gonna start out with one of the most obvious differences, which is that sculpting is better for organic modeling. As you might know, organic shapes, meaning anything we find in nature, whether it be animals, trees and plants, in addition to rocks, mountains and so on, are needed in many creative 3D projects. While 3D modeling is great for creating hard surfaces like buildings, weapons, furniture, vehicles, gadgets, etc., it is not the best for creating organic shapes. Even though you can use traditional 3D modeling to do that, I would say it is not going to be a wise option. And it is not going to be a smart use of your time and effort because 3D sculpting is designed and was created in the first place to do that and to allow 3D artists to work on organic shapes. Sculpting and 3D modeling deal with the 3D mesh differently. When you are sculpting something, you are kind of morphing, shaping, extending, or cutting an already existing mesh with many thousands of polygons. While you do this, you are moving, scaling, or rotating a bunch of polygons at the same time, which makes the process smooth and fast. On the other hand, modeling allows you to control individual polygons, vertices, or edges during the process of creating your 3D models. And what you create usually has to be created polygon by polygon or edge by edge, but you could use modifiers or add-ons to speed up the process. My point is, sculpting treats the mesh like a clay. I mean a whole part or an area of the mesh, while 3D modeling gives you control to work on individual components of the mesh that we mentioned like polygons, vertices, and edges. Sculpting requires more artistic skills. To be good as a 3D sculpting artist or to create organic shapes using sculpting, you will do better if you have a background in art or at least you need to understand and learn the fundamentals of art. I mean fundamentals such as form and anatomy, to be able to create realistic humans, animals or monsters for that matter. This knowledge is also necessary for 3D modeling, but it is not needed as much because modeling in the most part deals with surfaces that are not as fluid as organic surfaces. For example, someone who has never been good as an artist can create a car wheel, a house or weapon that looks good compared to his first attempt in 3D sculpting. 3D sculpting is more flexible. The challenges that 3D sculpting brings with it allow you to expand the horizon of what you will be able to do because it is more fluid and flexible. For example, you will be able to create complex shapes and details that will be extremely hard to mimic in 3D modeling. Details such as pores, wrinkles, scratches, and other extremely intricate details. And just like drawing with a pencil, sculpting also allows you to have incredible flexibility and brings all your ideas, designs, and creativity to life using the tools it offers according to the software you are using. Sculpting requires a higher polygon count. One of the reasons that allows sculpting to be a better medium to show your creativity while creating organic shapes, whether it be creating human beings, animals, monsters, or natural scenes, is the huge poly count that is required to do so. For example, to create an animal with all the details like muscles, imperfections such as wrinkles, pores, and scars if there are any, you will need sometimes millions of polygons to do so. This is a byproduct, or you can call it a necessity, or a requirement for that flexibility we are talking about. Sometimes, for example, when working on VFX for films or TV shows, 3D artists have to subdivide their models to reach millions of polygons and sometimes tens of millions to cover all the details 
that are required especially for close-up shots. Some examples of this include iconic characters such as King Kong, Godzilla, Thanos, etc. The realism and level of detail you see on the big screen is totally worth it though. And this takes us to the next point. Sculpting requires a stronger machine. If you are a 3D artist, you can work comfortably using 3D software such as Blender, Max, Maya or Cinema 4D, even if you have an average computer. But this becomes less true if your projects get bigger, whether it be 3D modeling or sculpting. I would say that this is more true when it comes to sculpting. For example, if you are modeling a house with all the details like walls, furniture and so on, there is a good chance that your computer will not show any signs of slowing down. But for example, if you copy that house with all its elements a few times trying to create a neighborhood, then you will face major performance issues unless you are using a workstation that is specifically designed for 3D work. On the other hand, simple sculpting work can be done using a good machine, but if you subdivide your mesh a few times, you will start seeing some things slowing down and your machine will start struggling. Even if you have a workstation, you need to keep in mind that there are limits and you have to use the resources you have wisely to avoid crashing your machine and losing your progress. Going back to the previous point we talked about, VFX artists use very powerful computers that allow them to work on very complex scenes with tens of millions of polygons without noticing differences in speed or performance. This is the case because it is very important for them and they know that sculpting very complex stuff is resource intensive for their machines. Modeling and sculpting complement each other. Probably a lot of people don't know that sculpting and modeling complement each other because they are both at the end of the day necessary for each other in terms of modeling. For example, if you sculpt an organic model in Blender or ZBrush, it will have a high polygon count as we said before and this is not optimal for big projects and it is not good especially for video game projects. To solve this problem, 3D artists have to turn any sculpture 3D model that is polygon dense into a form that is much more affordable if computer processing power was a currency. Because even with the progress we made with computers, we still need to be careful with our resources. The transition from sculpting to polymodeling or the process of having a sculpture turn into a 3D model with much less polygon count is called retopology. It is necessary to reduce the polygon count while keeping the general shape as if it was created using polymodeling, not sculpting. But the good thing is, the details will be still maintained through material maps that will be baked from high poly sculpture version to the new low poly 3D model. 3D modeling is more popular. If you take a look at the grand scheme of things, we can find out that not all industries that use 3D will need sculpting. This is the case because as we said multiple times, sculpting is mainly for creating high quality detailed organic shapes. For example, architecture, design, whether it be fashion, industrial or otherwise. They don't necessarily need sculpting. But on the other hand, almost any industry that uses 3D software will need someone who knows how to create 3D models without using sculpting tools or techniques. 3D modeling might be actually easier to learn. Both 3D modeling and sculpting are easy to get your feet wet, like it is the case with most artistic topics. I would say, what makes sculpting a bit harder than 3D modeling is the fact that it can be similar to 2D drawings in terms of the skills required. So if you want to create something advanced, especially organic models like characters, you're gonna have to practice more to be skilled at sculpting. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.